It is good to see everyone. It is wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. If you guys would, let's stand. We're going to read together from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. You read on the all sections just like normal. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in deserts, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. You may be seated. Let me direct your attention to the baptistry. It is my distinct privilege uh, today to baptize three sisters, and uh, I want to introduce you first to uh, the oldest sister, uh, Mackenzie Ross. So Mackenzie, you come into the waters of baptism. One more step. Good girl. This is Mackenzie. Mackenzie, I have an important question to ask you, and that's this. Mackenzie, are you trusting in Jesus and in Jesus alone for your salvation? Well, then, Mackenzie, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Proud of you. And then coming into the water of baptism right now is uh, Cameron, Cameron Ross. One more step. Good girl. This is Cameron. Cameron, are you trusting in Jesus and in Jesus alone for your salvation? Well, then, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Good girl. And then we have Taylor, Taylor Ross, coming into the waters of baptism. All right. All right. One more step. There we go. Yes, good. <laughs> They're excited to see you. Taylor, are you trusting in Jesus and in Jesus alone for your salvation? Well, then, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I baptize you now, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Proud of you. Good girl. Ah. Would you pray with me? Oh, Father God, we thank you so much for these young ladies, dear Father God, who you have given the faith to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have grace them with this salvation and lord we pray that you would be with their families and our church that we would continue to disciple them that they might walk with christ and glorify your name all the days of their life father we thank you for the saving grace that you give us through jesus and we long dear father god to see more and more come to know you for it's in jesus name we pray and all god's people said amen The stone that you rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. Words written by Isaiah, words also quoted by the apostles, preaching to those who were hearing the gospel message, telling them that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith and of our life and of our eternity. Would you stand as we sing of our Jesus? Oh, 
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ We welcome you here today to Bellevue and to our service, and today we have a very unique service, uh, a historic service. Um, For the last eight and a half years, we have been blessed with a growing number of Korean people uh, joining our church and being active in our specific Korean ministry. And there's a great story, and it's going to be told today. Uh, But as I have been communicating with you for many months, 
The Corinne uh, Church is about to launch out on their own. They've bought their own campus. They're about to move to it. And uh, th- this is the day that we launch them out, that we start a new church out of Bellevue, that we, uh, that we grow um, by, by actually letting go of 150 active people here at this church as they launch out and reach the community in an even a bigger way. I want to introduce to you, and many of you already know, and you've seen him and you've heard him speak before, um, but I want to introduce to you uh, the Corinne pastor, um, Nay Louie, and I want you to give him a warm, warm welcome to our service today. And uh, we are blessed to have our Corinne congregation worshiping with us these next two services. And uh, may, may you can, you can, we can all tell who we are here today. Um, and uh, what I would like us to do in this welcome time is to all stand. Can we all stand right now? And I want you to look for someone that's a part of uh, your Bellevue family uh, that uh, looks different than you, has a different culture, but is, uh, is a part of your brotherhood and sisterhood in the Lord. And I want you to shake their hand and welcome them here today as we start this celebration. Bless you. I'm going to ask everyone to go and and find your seat again, and we are going to begin celebrating by telling the story of how God sent the Korean people to Owensboro and to Bellevue. When we lived in Myanmar, we knew that the Karen people would have to flee and live in the forest. One week after I was born, my mother and I had to flee into the jungle. This was very difficult for my mother because she was very weak and sick. As I grew up, I had to run from enemy gunfire again and again, even through harsh weather, day and night. We had just had a mission team of volunteers from Bellevue in Thailand. right before we discovered that there was going to be an international center here in Owensboro and a, a, a clearing, a government clearinghouse for refugees from Burma and, and other parts of, the, of East Asia coming into our area. So um, a few of us got involved with the formation of the international center, which was very exciting to kind of see how all that rolled along. Um, and then we began to receive 
uh, refugees. Brother Greg mentioned in a sermon that the world was coming to us, that we wouldn't have to go around the world to minister to others, and the Burmese were coming to Owensboro. And we were approached, uh, Danny Gray, Angus McKinley approached our life group, the Etta Life Group that meets on Sunday night, if we wanted to help them, and we did. So we started an apartment warming party and, and gave them a lot of supplies. My husband Jeff said, you know, really, we should invite them to church. And it was Easter weekend, so we invited them to come Saturday night, and we, we picked them up, and they came to church for, for the first time with us, and we went to eat at New China afterward, and here we are, you know, that we're blessed to have fellow believers like like them. Uh, when I'm uh, first uh, coming to the Bellevue, the, the Bellevue member or uh, pastor, the health and food, health for my family. And uh, we feel uh, very, very, very happy for the health, everything we need. It was, wasn't long after that that many more uh, Burmese uh, refugee families began making their way to Bellevue. And Bellevue knew how to jump into action. This is why I love my church so much. Uh, they knew how to cross a culture that they, where they didn't understand the language and show love and support and meet needs. And we were meeting needs of, of families and the word was getting out that we cared for the Burmese refugees and we care, cared for the Karen people. And so the story began, and it's a wonderful story, and it's a real story. I still remember the very first day that I met on that Saturday when the Rices invited uh, Sase and Mama uh, A to, uh, to come and be a part of uh, a worship service on Easter weekend. And they were the first family to hit the ground from uh, the Burmese refugee process here in Owensboro. And they were the ones to come in that Sunday. And they're real people. And it, everything started from that point. And in fact, I want to honor Sase. Sase is here. Sase, would you stand? The first, the very first Karen man here in Owensboro and in our church. And there's more story to come. You're going to see that in the videos, and I don't want to steal the thunder. But um, the thing that I love the most about Bellevue is we get one thing. And what we get is this. Like we talked a few weeks ago, the second of the greatest commandments that God's given us is to love your neighbor as yourself. And our neighbor is anyone with a pulse that God's put in our path. And God put the Karen people in our path. And we got to love them and watch them grow and support them. And they have loved us. And it has been a gift. And a glorious, glorious story has unfolded of a church forming within our church. And I want us to continue to celebrate that right now. It, people on the outside looked like they were the win-win, but honestly, I was the win-win. Just um, to see a group of people and to know, because I had gone to Thailand, and I remember coming back and saying, God, Thailand's so far, I can't, I can't go there. I love these people. I, it was just something that had just stuck with me. And God always has greater plans that we never know about. And so he goes, ha, I'll just bring them to you. Some of the things that the International Center needed us to do or needed volunteers to do um, was to teach English. And so we began, um, there was a handful of people, Darlene Harley, myself, my wife, Jill, uh, Joyce Nation. We began teaching at the International Center a couple of nights a week, and that began a whole series of us being involved in English 
second language classes. Over the years, we had four to 500 in the English program. Some were in there for only six weeks until they became employed. Others stayed with us two to three years or even longer. A group of us got together and decided we would do a VBS at Germantown. And we went to Germantown and started forming relationships and for maybe two or three years and then the youth got involved with us and um, we just made it an annual event that we took VBS to Germantown Park in the summertime for the kids. So as we began to work with the kids, upward basketball season rolled around and we decided how cool would it be to let them experience that with all the rest of the kids in Owensboro. So we went door to door and we got these kids signed up for upward basketball. And from upward basketball, we did some um, things to keep them busy while one set was practicing and then the other. And we had a group of some young boys that had asked us that they wanted to learn more about God. And for four years, we did a life group essentially with eight boys. Some of those young men now are driving and it's just remarkable to see the maturity and how God is working in their lives. The very first baptism that we had in the, among the Karen people was with uh, Sase's wife, Mamai. And Mamai uh, was Buddhist. But after she had come to Bellevue and seen Christians love their family, um, she came to the place where she wanted to receive Jesus. And we were told of that, and Danny Gray and I went to visit uh, Sase and Mamai in their home, and with a translator, we shared the gospel with her and had the privilege of getting on our knees in their apartment and uh, leading her in a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And then I get chills just thinking about it. Um, then I had the, the, the honor and the privilege of being able to baptize her in our baptistry. I want us just for a moment to celebrate and to do that, I'd like us to get a, a visual of what God's added to the kingdom and added to our numbers here at Bellevue over these last eight and a half years. And I'd like to ask if all of our, all, everyone from our Karen congregation would stand and let us celebrate um, our brotherhood and sisterhood with you. Would you stand right now? Could everyone stand? Yes, yes, let's celebrate. <laughs> and I'd like you to remain standing, and I just want to say this to all of you. We love you, and we're proud of what God has done in and through you here in our city and in our church. And we are fiercely proud of how you are ready now to launch out and to be an autonomous, separate church yourself. We are so grateful to have seen God work and to see so many of you come to Christ and so many of you already had come to Christ before you even came here. And so your Christian love has added to ours. And we love you, and we celebrate what God has done through you. God bless. Would you celebrate one more time what God's done in these wonderful people? Bless you. You may be seated. And the story continues. Soon after the families were coming to Owensboro, they were hearing about the love of Bellevue. And so they were starting to come to our worship services and they were very, very loyal. I mean, they were there every week and they didn't understand our language. They just stood up when we stood up. They looked at the words on the screen when we would sing, but they couldn't sing themselves because they couldn't read the words. And um, 
but they were there and they were among us and they were worshiping uh, because they valued so much the opportunity to have the freedom to worship, to be in a land where they could be free to worship. And it was just so amazing to see that growing number of people. Eventually, it grew to about 70, 75 people uh, that would all be clustered together in, in, in that worship service on Sunday morning. We found out that a lot of them were Christians that had come to Owensboro. And we began to explore the idea of, of uh, having a church here, uh, having some type of Bible study. I know that uh, Wayne and Karen Heath were uh, very important to the er in the early stages of teaching Bible and in, in, uh, teaching the Bible in the early Korean church. Uh, we had gotten to the point where the, the congregation began to grow and grow and we felt like a spiritual leader or a pastor was necessary, so we began to pray for that. And then something happened. Um, there was one particular man, his name Naso, who knew English better than most all the others. And we attached to him pretty quickly and became friends. And uh, my family became friends with his family. And one day he came to the fireside room after a worship service and he said, Pastor, Pastor, you've got to pray for my pastor back in the camps. Um, he is getting ready to be relocated somewhere in the world and please pray that he'll come to Owensboro. And I thought, yeah, right. Like he's going to make it to Owensboro because he could be uh, assigned to Australia or Britain or Germany or anywhere in the United States. The odds are against Owensboro. But I said, yeah, I'll pray, and I did. What was amazing is weeks later, Naso comes to me and says, Pastor, Pastor, our prayers have been answered. Uh, my pastor is coming. Nay Louie is coming to Owensboro. I remember uh, Greg Falls and I going to Nay Louie's apartment and uh, having meeting his, meeting his two boys at that time. He since now has two other uh, boys, but uh, meeting Taylor and, and uh, Nay Louie and talking about him uh, leading our Korean language church, which was just an answer to prayer. It's just a, really a miracle if you think about how, how, what the odds were for him to actually get to Owensboro. By the grace of God, when we arrived in Owensboro, Bellevue Baptist Church welcomed us. Pastor Greg and Danny Gray came and welcomed us to our new home. When we arrived, we worshiped together with Bellevue. We did not have a congregation of our own. Since November of 2011, we have seen close to 20 people baptized here at Bellevue, and God has blessed our church with growth. Once a month, we come together and pray all night. God and Bellevue's leaders have encouraged us and we know that our church will keep growing.
Thinking back on our life, we realize how much has changed and is completely different. Back in Myanmar, we did not have the freedom or rights to do anything. Now that we have arrived here, we have many opportunities. No one prevents us from going to church. We can go about freely without the fear of harm. If we live under the law, we do not have any problems, so we thank God. Another thing, living here, we have the opportunity to worship and be close to God. Our life before and now is completely different because of how God has blessed us. My prayer for the Karen Baptist Church as it launches out on its own is that uh, they would always stay true to the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they would grow in the good news of Jesus, um, that they would raise the next generation to love Jesus and spread his gospel and that they would uh, win their community to Christ, 
They lead uh, their, the Buddhist members and the Muslim members of the Karen community that are here in Owensboro, and that they would bring the gospel to them and lead them to Jesus. I just really pray that they would be used of God to press back darkness and uh, bring the light of Jesus into Owensboro and around the world. I hope from the, my correct people one day they will be growing at the education and I hope from the water they will help in each other and at this one I'm going to help with that right now and one day they, they will go back into their country and help in the, uh, their people. It's exciting to watch uh, how excited they are, their church leaders are, to get into that new facility and to have their own fellowships and their own Bible studies and their own um, children's ministries and, and all the things that go along uh, with a new church, uh, but also seeing them, un helping them to understand that reaching out to the community, their community, and being part of reaching others and, and growing, growing their own uh, faith community is exciting. For us that have been involved in the volunteering uh, and, and helping in this ministry over the last eight years to know that God has brought a, a small group of people to the point where 140 or 150 of those people now come to church every Sunday morning at Bellevue. Uh, we're going to miss those folks. I spoke with someone just yesterday about um, the little Korean children not being involved in, in uh, Sunday morning life groups anymore. So. There's going to be a real emotional void there, I think, or, or an emotional tug on people's hearts because these little children aren't going to be running around our church on Sunday mornings anymore. Um, we've gotten used to them. We've gotten used to um, those kids coming and, and the families being involved. Uh, gosh. <laughs> um. Uh, it is my desire that uh, as this church launches out from us, the Karen Baptist Church and then us, the Bellevue Baptist Church, my prayer is that we would continue to have a, a brotherly, sisterly relationship with them that would last until Jesus comes, that we would still have opportunities to partner together in ministry and, and mutually encourage one another, uh, to have a network of relationship that lasts uh, on and on. We know that because God touched their hearts, it was in their hearts to help us. So we thank them all. They helped us so much. We don't know how to count them all. It is uh, now time for our offering, so if our ushers would come forward, let's have a word of prayer, please. Father God, we uh, come to you, we're humbled today, and uh, so thankful that you chose Bellevue to be part of this great community of our Korean believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we have a generous church, a church that gives and gives sacrificially um, to big missions offerings and other gifts throughout the year that allow us to open up our doors to, um, to people of different cultures. Uh, God, we, as we continue to worship uh, through our gifts and giving uh, this morning, Lord, let us keep that in mind that, um, that the, the resources that are provided this morning will go uh, to provide um, gospel outreach throughout the world. So we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the participation of the Korean church with us this morning. We thank you for this historical day that we are uh, sharing with them as we launch them out into a new endeavor, a new building, uh, a new effort to reach their community and to reach the world for Christ. We ask all this, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. 
I get the uh, honor of introducing you to Tu Ku, who is the pastor of the Korean Baptist Church in Akron, Ohio. He has been in America for about six years and been pastoring the, the church there in Akron for about three years now. Uh, tu Ku, is, uh, his, his church is, has about 400 members, uh, so it's a very great church, sustaining church, and we look forward to hearing from him. He's going to say a few encouraging words to our Korean church and to us as well. W. Malang, the one in a year, Sibuke Pastor Grail, Tau Putra Trani Lui, Dotta Pupo Kidula, Naya Doni Batasu, Dotta Queda Yawi, the Miller, you know, Sada Yaja Batakum Yava, the Miweda, Taradaga, no. Pasada na kita kopi la wet di depan, tetiba, tekluba, aku dah sudah ke ya dunia mata aku dah ya aku dah ya sibuk bagi tau putra di depan, dah tau pupu di depan dunia mana no? It is a great honor for me and beautiful to be with my brother and sister in Christ here. Firstly, I would like to thanks Pastor Graf, Pastor Nelui, and both church member. For allowing me to be with, with you in this special occasion, it is a great privilege for me. We, the correct people, we are badly in need of your prayer. As we see the picture, video, now, fightings, raping, torture, ethnic cleansing. And genocide still going on in Burma. If you don't believe, you check in with the internet and you see everything that happened in Burma now. So on behalf of the Korean people, I would like to say thank you to Pastor Greg and all the church members for your love and for your care and your consideration to the Korean people here. We might be different in our culture, our behavior, our living standard. But I really, really appreciate you because you take care of the correct people here. Ask Jesus has commanded you. So thank you so much. Many of the current people are moving to the United States since 2006 or something. And the KBC USA, we have the Korean Baptist Churches in the USA works established on 2008 with few people. But now we have seven regions with the Korean people in the United States. And we have more than 90 churches in the United States. Some of the churches, we work together with our America Baptist Fellowship uh, Fellow. And some of, some of us work with our other, no, our other churches. And our president is Reverend Samu, and the secretary is Reverend Dr. Le too. Maybe pastor know them very well. And today, actually, this is not my privilege. It might be someone, but finally, this privilege came to me, so I'm really grateful, and I would like to say to our current people, never forget what the Lord has done for you, and never ever forget what the Bellevue Baptist Church has done to you in eight and a half years. Never ever forget what they have done to you. I would like to read a scripture, Psalm 133. How beautiful and pleasant. It is when brothers live together in harmony. Now I can see today with my own eyes because our brother and sister, they love each other and they take care of one another. According to Esther 4.16, we, as believers, we must support each other in difficult times. And, and I can see that our brother and sister here fulfill what the scriptures told us to do. 
So it is a great honor to be here and to say thank you all for your love. As we are one body in Christ, we must work together because we have same faith, same baptism, and same Lord, and we are not different. As I mentioned earlier, we might be different in color and whatever we, we may be, but we have the same faith, the same baptism, and the same Lord. That's why even though the Korean people will learn from and have their old churches, I do request our pastor and all the church members here to continue to watch them and to encourage them. And whenever they need, you will support them with the spiritual need. I don't, I don't mean the physical need, spiritual need. Try to help them so that every day will be going well with them. Thank you so much. What I see you back here. I will be more part of where the matter of the people who are going to be able to get the money. The money that we are going to be able to get the money. The money that we are going to be able to get the money. The money that we are going to be able to get the money. The money that we are going to be able to get the money. So, the money that we are going to be able to get the money. The money that we are going to be able to get the money. Aku dah tak suruh lepas dua ni bawa ini, demi ulah puni, kami tak suruh le, akhirnya ke saya lah. Aku dah yang mula lepas kau ada, buku umur di, tak suruh suatu di pala, apa apa ini, mi tak suruh bar, tu le tuhonya ini lah, tak boleh lama lah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I'm so proud of our Korean congregation and uh, what they're about to do and how God's going to expand the kingdom. But I'm also torn inside as well because uh, we're having to say goodbye. Uh, Sunday morning's not going to be the same next week when we don't see all of you walking through the atrium to go to worship in the gym. And I have already talked to many of our children's volunteers uh, in our church who have three and four, depending on the class, um, uh, Korean children in each of our classes on Sunday morning uh, in our English-speaking uh, Sunday school, our life groups. And, and um, I, had, I had one couple that's in my life group on Wednesday night um, say, uh, we don't know that we want to say goodbye to those boys. We just might have to go join the Karen church. <laughs> and uh, we're all going to feel some grief, those of us that are still here, and um, we're going we're gonna to miss them. Uh, as long as I've been pastor here for 21 years, I've never, I've never given up 150 active people, you know, and really there's more than that overall, um, and just watch them like launch out from our church. So this is going to be a first. We're going we're gonna to shed some tears, and, uh, but I tell you what, I, I have a message today for our English-speaking members and our Karen-speaking uh, members, and that is from the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, beginning with verse 18. Jesus said to his church, to all of us, he said, all authority and in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus says, I have all authority, which means we need to listen to him, which means what he tells us to do, we are to do. We are to wrap our entire lives around his command. And what was his command? He said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That is our commission. We're to go... And make disciples, what? Of all nations. What does that mean? It literally means all peoples. All different tribes and all different languages. We are to make disciples from them. 
We've been doing that in the lives of the Corinth. They've been doing it in our lives too. And as you heard from the story, many of them were making disciples even before they got here. And we must continue to do that. I, I first want to speak to our Karen congregation and just say, go as you go, make disciples. Reach more of your community for Christ. Share the gospel with Buddhists and Muslims among you. But don't just stop there. Learn from us in this one thing. Be willing to take the gospel to someone of another language. Someone that doesn't look like you. If the Lord puts them in front of you, then they're your neighbor. Love them and care for them as you have seen us love and care for you. And not that we are putting ourselves on a pedestal. We're still learning too. But do that. Share the gospel. The Bible says we're to baptize them. Share the gospel. Baptize people. And share Christ with people of all flesh. Not just of your people group. But whoever God puts before you. Share the love of Jesus. And to the extent that you're capable, share the word of God with them. And to our English-speaking church, I say the same thing. This is our commission. You know, all of a sudden, on a Sunday morning, we're going to have more room in the building. There's going to be some places in the building that rattle a little bit, that are just a little empty, that have been full for a while. And it's up to us to recognize that that is God's clue, that we need to be looking for the next wave of evangelistic opportunities the next people that we need to reach. And what I believe is they're the people that you work with, the people you go to school with, the people that live next door to you or in your cul-de-sac or down the street, some folks in your own family that you need to invite, some that have young children and you need to invite them, and they're going to fill some of those empty seats in our life groups. We need to read. This city is still lost. This city still needs Jesus. And people of our culture and people of other cultures, God will send our way. And all we need to do is the same thing that God has called us to do before and that we have answered that call and we have done. And we need to love people and we need to share Jesus with people and we need to unashamedly invite them to church and watch God work. All of this started when Sase and Mama A was invited by Jeff and Tammy Rice to come to church on an Easter. Who knows what God will do in the life of someone in your life when you just invite them to church and watch God work and watch the church embrace them and watch that love happen. We need to say yes to Jesus and his command to share the gospel with this city and with this world. We're going to have a time of public invitation, and maybe God's laid it on your heart to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. What a great day to do it. Could be that God's laid on your heart to join a church like ours that's missions-minded and wants to reach out. And we're going to have our pastors here at the front for just a moment. We're going, to, we're going to have a time of invitation. Now, those of you that are used to things being the way they're always will probably think that this is the end of the service, and it's not. And it's one of the reasons why it's happening earlier. And so don't leave. Don't shoot out the back. Because there's a lot more left, or at least a little bit more left at the end. But right now, we want to give you a response time. If God's laying on your heart to join the life of the church or accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to ask our pastors to come forward, stand here at the front. Let's all stand right now. Let's sing together that Jesus paid it all. He paid on the cross for our sins. And he made us his church. And if God's wanting you to make a public decision today, you make that decision right now. Come forward. We're here to greet you and to pray with you. I hear the Savior say, Watch and find in me thine all in Jesus.
Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as So just a few announcements real quickly. Uh, Christmas Choir, if you're interested in being a part of that, we will continue to have sign-ups for that today at the Connections table, the big brown wooden table uh, in the atrium. Uh, if you uh, are interested in that, be sure to get signed up for it. And um, at, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead and sit down. <laughs> they're special announcements, but, you know, they're not that special. So. You can sit if you join choir. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, we need some help after this service is over. We've got a couple more things we're going to do, but after this service is over, uh, we need help setting up tables and chairs. Uh, our picnic, uh, for some reason, we decided to move it indoors today. So uh, uh, that's still going to happen, but we, we're going to need some help getting tables and chairs set up. And uh, so if you could stick around, that would be awesome. Our church picnic is today. And uh, we hope everybody is planning on being here. It's at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, come on out and be a part of it. Also, when we do dismiss in a few minutes, Pastor Greg would love to meet you, uh, talk to you more about what it means to be a Christ follower, be a part of Bellevue, or just meet you and get to know you better. And he will be in the atrium area dodging tables that are going to be set up uh, out there. So uh, uh, be sure to go and meet him. He'll be toward the Welcome Center in the middle, and uh, he would love to meet you and get to know you. So, um, uh, Pastor Greg, I think now we have a presentation to make. You too. We want to make a uh, presentation to Nay Louie on behalf of the church here. Um, Bellevue wants to give you a gift. You are starting a new church, and for those of you that don't know where that is, it's, it's where the uh, Pentecostal church is. They bought it from the Pentecostals. I'm sure it'll have a different name here soon, uh, but it's about a tenth of a mile down the road here on 81. You can see it right on the right before you get to Phil's Cabinets, and uh, uh, so whenever you pass by there, you'll be praying for them. But uh, one of the things that uh, we know that you were wanting to have in your church is uh, Bibles in the pews and uh, hymnals. And so uh, we have bought you an entire congregation worth of, uh, it, it's got the Bible in it and uh, hymns in it, and we want to give this to you for your church to use and worship the Lord for years to come. God bless you. Yes. And uh, we want to have a time of commissioning right now as we conclude this service. And to do that, here's what we'd like you to do. Um, we would like all the, all the Korean congregation to come forward and fill here. We want, to, we want to pray over you. And if you would come right now, and those of you that understand English and can help the others know what I just said, would be great. And just come fill this area here. We want to honor you. And then we want to pray a prayer of commissioning on you. You want to grab that mic too? For those of you that are in the sound, we, we're going to have three people do the commissioning. If you would come up too. Well, 
what I'd like to do is I'll start the prayer, you say a little bit of prayer, and then he's going to finish, okay? All right. Yes, come here. Oh my, do you see how many are going to be leaving us to, to launch out? This is what God has done in the last eight and a half years. Can we not rejoice? <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is what God has done. This and so much more. You know, in eight years, there's always a turnover. I mean, people have come and gone and gone to other cities, and, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have been a part of what God is doing here. Well, we are going to commission you, and we're going to pray that God blesses you as you launch out and start a church of your own. And we just pray that we will always be brothers and sisters. We're just going to be neighbors. We're just going to be close to one another. Let us, let us continue to cooperate in the work of the gospel. Even though we're two separate churches, we're still one family. And so with that being said, we're going to have a time of uh, commissioning of them right now. And I'd like uh, everybody to stand in honor of this moment. And uh, we're going to have this time of commissioning and then we're dismissed. Um, but I do pray and hope that before you leave English-speaking church, you converge on these people and you shake their hands and you hug their necks and you show love, okay? That's like a good deal, all right? So don't leave yet. We've given you plenty of time. We've not, wait, we've not gone over or anything. And we just want you to come and you wish them well with your... You, some of you say, well, I don't know the language. You know this and you have a smile on your face and you have a hug in your arms. You show them love today as we launch them out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we, were, we are overwhelmed and moved that you, eight and a half years ago, decided to send Sase Mae to this city as the first Korean people to come, and that you and your providence brought them to Bellevue, and you touched our hearts, and you gave us a love so big that we couldn't even understand. And you taught us, dear Father God, that these are people, they're your people, they're your children, and that you love them, and that you wanted us to love them. And what we found is that they loved us, and we loved each other. And Lord, we just thank you for all that came to Christ, and all that stepped up and lived for Jesus, and all who gathered to organize a church. And so, Father God, we commission them. We ask your blessing upon them. You fill them with your Holy Spirit. You give them wisdom. But, Lord, we also pray that you would continue to keep us close as brothers and sisters in Christ. Now as two churches, but may we be one heart and one family. Help us to help each other and partner with one another in the days to come. And Lord God, I just thank you for Nay Louie and for everyone here. And I pray that you would use them to take the gospel to this city and world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Paulo Muko, the Sibliki Nabrino Pudo Manila, the Niyame Munita Kula Bogo, Labadoni Mada Sugdo, the Quedaya, Labaka Malak Bobana, Akuraba, the Sibliki Nabrino Pudo Manila, Sugdona K, Poplada Lug, Sayua Cotimania, Labadobu at the Park Cotimania, Labuwe, the Mipuakin, your Pudil Park, La Juanida Ablea Dobuni. Possibly you are a malak boba, you could have waited part of Sugar Kane, Miss Sugar Dollar Kigder, Lubago Oda Patau Puda Bue, Dapata Tu Toda Bue Kodaba, Pukigina Nalanu Godoba, Nugusu Tau Pudra, Nugusu Riki, Tau Pua to Kita Pua Dirpa, Tau Pupoko, Dinova Dek, Pueda Tai da Quik, Pueda Tahuda Poller, Tapitko Matako Puteba, so we tag your master key, a wetted paniki. But double wetted packet thin or dog. The sibling in a cobbler, double wet did the god in the parlor, Tao Puaway, at a tosser master at a short term master did the park. The Tuni Hawala, Taki Buddha, let a pitico mother got Sumena Buna wet the park of Mad Godale, Taidaqui, let a late Lenya Lotaki Pau, Suetak in your massacre, wet it paniki. But Dolla gave a double wet it pile, Casayo Sibu, lay you shoe creamy hope of Higgin and Alopalo Muko. Amen. God, it's my honor to, to pray and, and launch our Korean uh, Baptist Church of Owensboro off, Lord. Um, we pray, Lord, for Nay Louie and his leadership. We pray for the leadership of the church. 
We ask your blessing on them, Father, in the future. God, I thank you for Bellevue Baptist Church and the many, many volunteers that have poured their lives uh, and time into the establishment of this church. And, and uh, Lord, today we get to see the fruit of that. Today we get to see um, what the many hours of English and t uh, teaching and the, the, the many hours of, of Bible study and the many hours of transportation, bus drivers, all the people that have been involved in every aspect of, of forming this church, Lord. And now we get to see the blessing. So thank you, Lord, for this day. Um, we set this church apart now, just like the dis disciples and, and Paul set the, the early missionaries aside in the book of Acts. We sanctify them, Lord. We ask you to bless them as they go out now and reach the nations. Let them meet, their, uh, meet the needs of their own community, Father, but also the community around us. Uh, help them, Lord, to be a, a church that reaches the nations. We thank you again, Lord, for this wonderful, wonderful day, this historic occasion as we uh, send out a church out of Bellevue, Father. Thank you, Lord. And we ask all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.